you get a good cold day like this, you don't, uh, the, de the decay rate is not very rapid. It's slow. It's a slow down on a day like this. If you were here in the summer, it would be going great guns. I'm the person that founded what's called the Body Farm, which is a research facility that we use to find out the length of time since death. What are the changes that occur in a body and how long does it take? And there are multiple variables, the major factor being temperature, so you decay faster in the summer than you do in the winter. And uh, you have all the others, the clothing and no clothing, and this facility is set up to look at all of those variables. I came here on June the 1st of 1971, knew the medical examiner, and the medical examiner asked if I would serve as a forensic anthropologist for the medical examiner system, and I said yes. And it wasn't long before bodies started coming in. And about half of the first 10 cases I got are maggot-covered bodies. And the police don't ask you, who is that? They ask you, how long have they been there? I think the reason for that, in the criminal justice system, they're trained the sooner you get on the chase, the more likely you are to solve the crime. Well, you know, I didn't know anything about maggots, and I looked in the literature, and there really wasn't much there. And so I thought, you know, we better do some research on this, because I want to know what I'm talking about. I want to talk to police. So I went to the dean in the fall of 71. In November of 71, I went to the dean. I said, dean, I need some land to put dead bodies on. And that was the beginning of the body farm. He was the first person to, to have this idea to research what happens to bodies after death and when it happens, and the first person, or at least the first person to do something about it. We have a number of individuals who will kill their wives or kill their husbands. And what do you do with a dead wife or a dead husband? Well, uh, you got to get rid of it, but how do you do that? Well, one of the things is to go out in the yard, mainly in the flower garden, and dig a grave and somebody uh, looks out and says, hey, what you doing over there? Well, you can't say you're burying your husband. So uh, uh, you put a concrete slab over it and say you're pouring a little patio. And we have a lot of bodies buried under things like this in, in our culture today. This was a master's thesis in which we're using ground penetrating radar to look, under, look through the concrete and go down underneath it. It's interesting looking at that project over the nine month period that this master's thesis ran, you could see that there was a body under there and as time goes by, you can see the body decay. But normally if you just call, you go out to a crime scene, you wouldn't get that nine month sequence. He's funny, he's charming, he's genuinely good hearted. I mean, I can imagine that someone without all those attributes might try to set up a facility like this and just get nowhere with it, you know, but he is legendary and beloved in East Tennessee. There's a skeleton there that has no cover on it except for the leaves. Here's one of the bones way down here too, that's a cubus. Back up there. I handle the William M. Bass uh, donated skeletal collection. It is the end product of our donation program and those individuals that have willed themselves uh, to our program to be used for both our decomposition research as well as the skeletal aspect uh, of our research. My name is Rebecca Wilson. I am the assistant coordinator of the Forensic Anthropology Center. I, this collection started in 1981, and anyone that wills himself to uh, our program to be used for uh, research at the Anthropological Research Facility is uh, eventually brought here um, and is stored here in perpetuity. So if they are stored as long as we exist, they will be here. Currently, we have uh, just over 700 individuals uh, in the collection, uh, which makes it the largest collection in the United States of modern Americans. 
uh, it exceeds the next largest program for about 400 individuals. So it's fairly substantial. We have individuals where they have been directly uh, affected by a case, uh, whether they were a victim or they had a, a member of their family that was a victim. And those individuals are usually more interested in the decomposition research. And they really want to be used as much as possible for forensic related uh, uh, research at our, our research facility. We also have people that just want to be used for teaching. They, they're either the individuals that want their skeleton on display in a classroom, which obviously we cannot, and we, we tell them that having a, a skeleton restrung or, or kind of put back together is not, um, is not as beneficial for us. Uh, so we have those individuals that are just like, I want, I want to be used for teaching. And those individuals that choose that and highlight that are more of the academics. A lot of them, you'll see a lot of uh, nurses and a lot of teachers that say, I really want to be used for that aspect. Obviously, when we go on a case, you're starting in your head, putting pieces together and know where to look when you get back to that lab. Um, so it's, it, to me, having the, the skeletons available in the collection is a, a way so that students can learn what they are expected to find and know in the field and in the lab situation, but also be an avenue for research uh, with those age indicators, looking at, OK, the difference between males and females, uh, looking at the, the way we age because those are things that do change with time and having a modern collection available to do that is extremely important. Um, so we get now, uh, this past year we've had 26 researchers from other institutions coming just to use the collection. And, and that's amazing and, and the number of requests increases every year. Um, and so we, to me it's a value, this is a data set and it's a, it's a resource for other people to use. They're having troubles in in courts these days, where you know the average juror is uh, a member of the community, and CSI has been so uh, successful that people think if you don't do it like it's done on CSI, then there's something wrong with you, you know. And so you've got to convince them, hey, uh, we don't get it done in an hour, and. Uh, it takes a little bit more research than what CSI shows that's going on. We've had a couple of experiments. We wanted to reproduce death in a trailer to see how long it takes for a body to decay in a trailer situation like that. Occasionally we'll try to reproduce a crime scene which there's not much in the literature on and uh, that was one of the ones that we've done that. And there's a body under there. And the reason we cover them up with black plastic is that maggots don't like sunlight. So when a body is out here and uh, you have it in the sun and the shade and so forth, the maggots will get on the body, but they will get out under the skin. So they will leave the skin as an umbrella. You will find a body out sometime that looks fairly good condition, but when you get up to that body and look at it very carefully, you'll find it, that the skin is just leather. Literally, it has turned to leather, and uh, there's nothing there but a skeleton with a leather covering. And what we're trying to do is to get down to the, the skeletal remains. We put that on there so that the maggots will do a better job of cleaning the skeletons off. We have buried here five, five burials. When we buried the individuals, we ran pipes down and ran pipes through the body. And this is to get the compounds of all the fatty acids that are given off the body. One of my doctoral students uh, who's done this project has found over 500 compounds that are given off of decaying bodies. Now, not all 500 of those are equal in identifying a body, but he has defined a sniffer, a handheld device that you can walk across the ground, and if you find one of those compounds, 
that he's using in his data bank, uh, you can tell that there's a buried body there. So this is the type of research that we're doing. Now the next question that comes up, and the reason they're still here, um, do you get the same compounds given off of a body that's been dead two years that you get the first year? We don't know that, so we left it. And we're now in the fourth year. These things have been here four years, and uh, there are some decreases of some, uh, but uh, of course, how long are you gonna leave them? Well, I don't know how long we'll leave them. It'll depend on, uh, you know, when you get a point of diminishing returns. But we do have individuals, who, you do have cadaver dog handlers who say that, oh, their dogs can smell Civil War graves. Well, that's 140 years ago. Uh, I don't know. You know, I, I wonder a little bit about that. Uh, but we do now have the techniques in the forensic anthropology area that we can go about looking at things like that.